If you were a kid at the Iditarod. A full Iditarod racing team consists of a musher and about 16 dogs. The dogs pull the musher on the sled packed with gear and supplies. You can see the musher, the sled with supplies packed, the dog booties, and a dog coat. A race like no other. Each year in early March, Alaska holds its biggest, most thrilling sporting event, the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race. Dozens of the world's top mushers gather in Alaska's biggest city, Anchorage. They bring their teams of specially trained sled dogs. Soon, they will set off on an epic race across the state's rugged wilderness. Riding on sleds behind their hardworking dogs, they will cross more than 900 miles of rough terrain. The weather will be cold and snowy. The journey will take more than eight days for even the fastest teams. Imagine you were a kid in Alaska during the Iditarod. You would get an up-close look at one-of-a-kind event. Turn the page to set off on an amazing adventure through the Alaskan wilderness. You will find out what it takes to make it to the end of the Iditarod Trail. Meet Maggie. Maggie Williams lives with her family in a small Alaskan town. Mushing is a big part of their lives. Maggie's dad used to race in the Iditarod every year. Now the family runs a business that takes people on sled dog tours and gives mushing lessons. This year, they are getting back into the big race. Maggie's older sister, Laura, has been training for several years. Now Laura is going to compete in the Iditarod for the first time. Meet Alex. Alex is Maggie's cousin. He lives in Florida and is visiting Alaska to see the race. His cousins visit him in Florida almost every year, but this is his first time in Alaska. He has never seen snow before. Alex is a little worried that the weather will be too cold for him. Still, hanging out with Maggie will be fun. So will cheering on Laura in the race. Alex set his bags down in the guest room. He was excited to be in Alaska. But he couldn't stop shivering. Come on, Maggie said. I'll give you a tour. You can even meet the dogs. I don't know if I'm ready to go back outside, Alex replied. I'm freezing, just walking behind the car in the house. Maggie rolled her eyes and handed him a heavy coat. Then she grabbed his arm and led him to the door. A Brief History of Mushy People have used sled dogs to get across the snowy areas for thousands of years. This way of traveling has, been a, has a rich history in Alaska. It was once the only way to get to many parts of the state. This was before airplanes or snowmobiles. In the 20th century, Alaskans began holding sled dog races. It was a way to honor their past. This tradition has continued. The Iditarod and other races are held around the state every year. The first Iditarod trail sled dog race was held in 1973. Maggie took Alex to the dog kennels. She led him from one dog to the next. She stopped near the dog with black fur and blue eyes. This is Shadow, she said, petting the dog. He's my favorite. I've helped raise him since he was a puppy. He's still young but he's very fast. She walked over to another dog with red and white fur. This is Max, she said. He's the lead dog on Laura's team. Alex laughed as Shadow licked his face. I can't wait to see them run, he said. Meet the team. An Iditarod team usually has 16 dogs. Some have special roles to play. One or two lead dogs run at the front of the group. They have to be able to react quickly to obstacles. Behind the lead dogs are swing dogs. They help the team turn left or right. The dogs right in front of the sled are called wheel dogs. They help steer the sled itself. All the other dogs are simply called team dogs. They add speed and power to the team. Only northern breed dogs are allowed to race in the Iditarod. These dogs have warm, thick fur. 
The most common types are Alaskan Huskies and Siberian Huskies. The whole family went to Anchorage on Saturday morning. The race's ceremonial start was this day. It wasn't the real race. It was a day people could get a close look at the teams. The real race would start the next day. Crowds of excited spectators lined the city streets. Alex shivered as he pointed towards the starting line. There's Laura, he said. The mushers and their dogs look so cool. One by one, the mushers started racing down the street. They took off a couple of minutes apart. As Laura passed by, she high-fived Alex and Maggie from her sled. From Anchorage to Nome. Each year, the Iditarod kicks off in Anchorage. Huge crowds gather to watch the mushers race 11 miles. This part of the race does not count toward the team's final time. Instead, the race is restarted the next day. The restart takes place in either Willow or Fairbanks, depending on weather. Teams then follow a series of more than 20 checkpoints from the restart location to the finish line in Nome. An Iditarod team can start with up to 16 dogs. At least five of the dogs must remain when the team crosses the finish line. The next afternoon, everyone gathered in the tiny town of Willow. It was time for the real start of the race. The wind was strong and the snow was falling fast. It formed big piles called snowdrifts. It is, always, is it always this snowy? Alex asked. He pulled his hood over his head. Actually, no, Maggie replied. This is pretty crazy weather. It's almost a blizzard. I hope the dogs will be up to the challenge, her dad added. Watching the weather. Alaska weather can be extreme. Average temperatures along the trail range from about negative 11 degrees Fahrenheit to 24 degrees Fahrenheit. It can sometimes get even colder than that. During almost every Iditarod, temperatures have dropped to as low as negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit at some point. There is also plenty of snow. An average of 8 to 21 inches of snow cover the trail most years. The highest snow depth was 45 inches in 2009. Most years, snowfall can be snow falls during the race. Mushers can expect about 2 to 4 inches of of new snow. Maggie and Alex were glued to their computer for the next few days. They followed the latest race news closely. They cheered each time Laura reached a checkpoint. Maggie's dad was paying close attention to the race too. One morning he had an idea. Let's fly to the next che checkpoint in my plane, he said. We could see Laura as she passes through. Alex could hardly believe his ears. You have an airplane? He asked excitedly. Following the action. Watching the Iditarod isn't like watching other sports. You can't go to a stadium and see the race. You can't watch most of it on TV either. Most fans keep up with the action online. The sleds have GPS devices on them. These keep track of the mushers' positions. Live video streams are available at certain points on the trail. The biggest fans try to catch the action in person. They travel to Anchorage, Nome, or even the remote checkpoints. Fans can ride on a musher sled during the ceremonial start, but it isn't free. Some pay thousands of dollars to do this. Wow, Alex said as he climbed out of the small plane. This is really the middle of nowhere. Yep, Maggie agreed. The trail goes through some really remote areas. Maggie's dad led them to a spot where they could see the action. They watched as several mushers passed by. Finally, Maggie pointed off into the distance. There she is, she yelled, but a worried look soon came to her face. Why is Max running like that, she asked. Something is wrong. Racing Strategies it takes more than fast dogs to win the Iditarod. Each musher has a strategy. The biggest decisions include when to take breaks to eat. Deciding how long to sleep or rest is also important. Another strategy is carrying a few dogs at a time on the sled.
The musher can switch while dogs ride in the sled. This lets them rest without stopping. A musher prepares a meal for his dogs during the 2013 Iditarod. A veterinarian at the checkpoint took a close look at Max. Maggie and Alex watched from a distance. I don't think Max is going to be finishing the race, Maggie said. Her dad nodded. I think you're right. He'll be coming with us when we leave. But what will Laura do without her lead dog, Alex asked. One of the other dogs will have to take over, Maggie answered. Keeping dogs healthy. The Iditarod is difficult for even the strongest, healthiest dogs. Some dogs get injured during the race, just like human athletes might. They also get tired. There are veterinarians at each checkpoint. They inspect the dogs to make sure that they are in good shape. Sometimes a dog can't continue the race. Then its musher leaves it behind at the checkpoint. The dog is cared for and flown to either Anchorage or Nome. Then it can rejoin the team after the race. More than 1,000 dogs compete in the race each year. Maggie and Alex watched as Laura set off on the icy trail. Alex pointed out that a black dog was leading the team. It's Shadow, Maggie yelled. He's an interesting choice for the lead position, said her dad. He doesn't have Max's experience. That's true, Maggie replied, but I know he can do it. Rules of the race. Mushers must follow a number of rules over the course of the race. They must make take regular rest breaks. They also must take three long breaks. One lasts 24 hours. It can be taken at any checkpoint. The other two are eight hours each. They happen at certain points on the trail. Mushers might also stop to sleep outdoors for a couple of hours at a time at other points along the trail, but they must try to stay awake as much as possible. Mushers must keep their sleds stocked with certain supplies at all times. These include food, an ax, snowshoes, and a sleeping bag. They also need to have plenty of dog food, and they must carry two sets of booties for each dog's feet. By packing lightweight supplies, mushers make it easier for their dogs to pull the sled. A few days later, the whole family went to Nome. They wanted to see the mushers cross the finish line. A little more than eight days had passed. Suddenly, a siren blasted through the town. Alex jumped in surprise. What's that, he yelled. Don't worry, Maggie said with a laugh. That happens whenever a team is close to finishing. They watched as several teams came rushing into town that afternoon. It was starting to get dark. There was still no sign of Laura. A prize for the slowest team. Even the fastest teams take more than eight days to complete the Iditarod. For others, the journey can take much longer. The last team to cross the finish line wins a special award. It is called the Red Lantern. The longest time ever recorded was at the first Iditarod in 1973. The Red Lantern winner took more than 32 days to finish. In 2017, 72 teams entered the race. Only 64 of them finished successfully. Finally, the siren rang again. Maggie and Alex started cheering when they recognized Laura. Shadow was at the front of the team. He was running as fast as the wind. The family rushed to greet Laura as she crossed the finish line. You did it, Maggie shouted as she hugged her sister. Laura looked tired but excited. I'm a long way from first place, Laura replied, but I'll be back here next year to try again. I can't wait to see it, said Alex. This was so much fun that I stopped noticing how cold it is. Masters of Mushing. Some mushers have achieved amazing things on the Iditarod Trail. Lance Mackey set a record. He won the race four times in a row from 2017 to 2000, 2007 to 2010. Rick Swenson has won the race five times. That is more than any other musher. Susan Butcher won the race four times. She won in 1986, 
1987, 1988, and 1990. Dallas Seavey was 25 when he won in 2012. He became the youngest winner in race history. He has won three more times since then. Dallas's father, Mitch Seavey, was 60, 57 when he won in 2017. He became the oldest winner in race history. Dallas Seavey celebrates with his dogs after winning the 2015 Iditarod. The Iditarod Trail. There are two main routes along the Iditarod Trail. Each has a number of checkpoints labeled below that, that teams must pass through along the way. The race switches between them each year. The end.